So we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with the first presentation uh, on endovascular abdominal aortic aneurysm repair, patient selection and, devi and devices. This is going to be presented by Dr. John Lane. Dr. Lane is a former uh, UCLA fellow and has, is doing some great work. Uh, he's presently at the University of California at San Diego, where he's a professor of surgery. He's uh, the director of endovascular uh, uh, therapy and the chief of the San Diego VA Hospital. John. Uh, thank you, Dr. Quinones. I'd, I'd have to say uh, welcome, everyone. It's uh, an honor to uh, return to my alma mater and to uh, be invited here by Dr. Quinones, one of my uh, mentors and one of my credit a lot of, uh, a lot of my success to. So uh, thank you, sir. Um, I'm gonna, I have a very broad topic today, uh, talking about uh, EVAR de device selection in 2015. I'm saying this because probably 15 minutes after my talk, this will be obsolete um, because devices are changing so rapidly. Um, and as far as my disclosure slide, I have been involved in a lot of clinical trials. Uh, currently, I'm a site investigator for the Nelix trial uh, out of Endologix, but I've had work with, um, with uh, many other companies. Um, so uh, I do have experience with these devices. And uh, because of this, this uh, reminds me of uh, my experience with surfing because I, I always try to throw a surfing analogy in here being from uh, San Diego. And this is a slide that was given to me by Peter Schneider a long time ago when I first started talking about AAA. And choosing a device is a lot like choosing a surfboard. And as you can see here, this is Peter Schneider's quiver and it goes every, anywhere from a short board for, uh, for certain beach break conditions to a long board for so small conditions to your big wave gun. So that's how I look at choosing devices for um, for uh, uh, endovascular AAA repair. And hopefully after going through this uh, litany of uh, devices, you'll be a lot like this is not one of my daughters, but it certainly looks like one of my daughters I'm taking her to a, a, a candy store with awe and amazement and not feeling overstuffed like Augustus here after a, uh, a day at the Willy Wonka chocolate factory. So I'm gonna be discussing many of the commercial, all of the commercially available graphs on the market, Gore, Metronic, Endologix, Cook, Trivascular, and Lombard. And I will be talking about Nelix, which is currently uh, just uh, wrapping up an IDE trial. This data will be presented at, v at the VEATH meeting later this month, and I will be giving some opinions here. So as I go through the uh, device designs, I want you to keep in mind uh, the different qualities, the components, two-piece, three-piece, unibody, or uh, independent stents, different types of fixation used, suprarenal, infrarenal, barbs, hooks, or flares, or the newer polymer devices, um, and some uh, idea about deliverability and aortic and iliac di diameters treated. So going rapid fire, uh, the Gore C3 uh, excluder uh, device, uh, tried and true device, modular two-piece dev device made out of the proprietary PTFE material, which is bonded to a, a nitinol frame. Um, it has aortic and iliac extenders and goes through a pretty standard 18 to 20 French, uh, and it's a sheath uh, delivery system. Uh, the neck can be anywhere. Uh, it, the IFU is for 15 millimeter diameter and a 29 millimeter uh, neck. And I think the unique component about this device is that it is fully repositionable. It's the only fully repositional device that can be moved either cranially or collaterally um, with nice deliverable limbs. So with all the modular devices, this is basically what it looks like with an ipsilateral uh, trunk uh, and uh, leg, contralateral legs, and then extenders both for the iliac and the uh, aortic components. And their seal, they have a, uh, a proprietary sealing ring, which is made out of PTFE, and they uh, seal with the use of hooks. Um, and uh, the migration resistance, they're, they're purposely decided not to uh, place uh, suprarenal hooks or barbs, and, and the fixation is done all uh, entirely infrarenally. Uh, very deliverable, it is a sheath delivery system, but once it's, uh, once it's uh, in place, that the limbs are very much like their also uh, proprietary Viabon, which is able is just very conformable to tortuous anatomy as seen in these pictures. The, the uh, repositionability is shown on this slide where after the device is uh, landed, it can be reconstrained and you can see that the hooks uh, can be, the hooks can be detached uh, when the device is reconstrained and can be moved either cranially or caudally for um, aortic positioning. But the other nice uh, feature about this is when uh, the device can also be spun or moved if you have difficulty uh, cannulating the gate from the, uh, from the femoral position. And so it has these two uh, things are very um, advantageous for difficult aneurysm repair. Metronic Endurant 2, an also a modular two-piece design system, uh, a little bit different. That's nitinol, and that's, uh, that's uh, covered with a multifilament polymer, also with aortic and iliac extenders with similar uh, device delivery. Um, the neck dimensions 15 millimeters and up to 32 millimeter diameter neck. 
Um, I'll show you it does have very stable fixation with uh, super renal um, hooks and uh, uncovered stents and a, a very nice uh, sheathless hydrophilic delivery system. So um, the, uh, the stents that are used are these M-shaped uh, stents that you can see uh, here on the uh, main body of the device. They're uh, able to treat uh, some high neck angulation. This is showing a very high neck angulation up to 60 degrees and all the, the IFUs for 15 millimeters. They have very good data for short neck um, 10 millimeter um, landing. The uh, hooks, they have a, a top cap which will constrain the, um, the, uh, the hooks and the super renal uh, stent. And when you have the device in good position, you can drag it uh, caudally. And once you're happy with that, with this uh, use of this uh, blue knob, you can advance the top cap and, um, and uh, place the, uh, the hooks very stably. Another uh, picture of the super renal fixation. You can see the hooks here in this magnified uh, view, electropolish to prevent uh, corrosion and fracturing, and they have excellent uh, two-year data with, uh, without migration in their IDE. A little bit more on their um, IDE data, excellent IDE data, uh, zero endoleak, zero migration, zero aneurysm-related re mortality, and a very low 1.4% um, additional procedures needed. Uh, going on to endologics, a very different uh, design. This is a unibody design. Um, that sits on the uh, aortic bifurcation or so-called anatomic fixation, so it has columnar support. Uh, with endologics, they have a, a cobalt chromium stent frame, which is loosely bound to a PTFE material. Uh, as far as their proprietary cuff, the Vela cuff, um, the material is able to expand and uh, create an additional seal, active seal. I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, their profile is a 19 French OD or 17 French ID with a very small 8 French contralateral limb because the limb is uh, snared in this uni unibody uh, configuration. Uh, also able to treat 32 millimeter uh, diameter necks, 15 millimeter length. Um, their iliac limbs are fixed in length, either 30 or 40 millimeters. This can be sometimes an advantage, sometimes a detraction. Um, and the ability to sit on the aortic bifurcation allows for later uh, infrainguinal intervention. So here's the device. Again, the hydrophilic delivery system, uh, 17 French ID, 19 French OD. And I'll talk a little bit more about the components. The unibody design, again, sits on the aortic bifurcation. It comes in 22, 25, or 28 millimeter um, with uh, proximal extension cuffs, 25, 28, and 34. These can be aggressively oversized and come with either a, uh, a suprarenal or infrarenal uh, configuration. Here's the iliac limb extenders, can be straight, tapered, stepped, or flared, and can treat up to a 23 millimeter diameter uh, iliac. So why is this uh, thought to be advantageous? This is a, a force diagram they show of a modular, standard modular device. The red color is not showing up, but the red color is supposed to be additional force, which is kind of a brown here. Um, but with this uh, anatomic fixation sitting on the aortic bifurcation, the forces are, are, uh, are really uh, fixated here or are concentrated here, whereas um, the uh, modular devices have to have a very strong fixation um, at, because of the additional forces on the modular devices. So with that, they're able to have a very, um, a, a very low radial force cuff with loosely bonded PTFE and is showing that it can conform to the nooks and crannies. Thought to, uh, and this is their active seal technology, and this is thought to be very good for uh, both thrombus-laden necks and for um, reverse taper necks. So here it is, the, uh, the low radial force stent design that's uh, sitting here in a reverse taper neck. You can see that the uh, strata material or PTFE materials billowing outside of the stent frames to confer additional fixation. Um, and when aortic pressure is uh, allows, allowed to fill up the graft and can help to ex extend the seal zone. Uh, moving on to the Cook Zenith Flex. Again, this is a newer design, so it's a uh, uh, lower in profile than the previous Cook Zenith device. This is a three-piece system, so it has extenders on both iliacs. Uh, it is made out of stainless steel and polyester, which makes it a little bit bigger in delivery. However, it does have some additional features which, um, which uh, make it very advantageous for different types of applications. They have uh, spiral Z stents, which makes their stents uh, much more conformable now. Um, and they have these additional technology, the Renew Aero Uno Iliac device and the uh, ZFEN device for extending the fixation into the uh, renal segment. I know Dr. D. Robertus has a talk later on, so I'll just mention this briefly. Again, it's tried and true system, been around since 2004, tri-modular, a three-piece device. Um, you can extend the lengths uh, on both sides, and so there's over 30,000 different configurations that can be done with this device with very tried and true 0% um, uh, migration and uh, freedom for aortic mortality. This is a, a spiral Z stents that uh, they're talking about with the, um, with the iliac limbs, which allow for very uh, good flexibility and very good patency at one year, over 98%. This is the ad uh, addition of the uh, Z-Fen. 
with the uh, with the Zenith Flex is meant to have a 15 millimeter uh, diameter or millimeter neck uh, with 60 degree angulation or less. The Z fan allows you to go a very short neck um, with the um, with renal stents and uh, scallops for the visceral vessels. And so, if you push the two together, both with the um, Zenith Flex and the and Z fan, they say they're able to treat 95 percent of uh, of anatomy. Here's a CT picture of uh, a Z-fin in place in a very, um, very difficult neck. You can see that the uh, fixation with the additional, uh, additional stents. And this is the, um, the aortic extender. It, it, it can be made in a very, uh, a very uh, uh, multitude of different types of uh, small and large fenestrations or scallops for the visceral vessels. That's all I'll say about that. Uh, moving on to the trivascular ovation prime system. This is the first polymer-based system that I was, I'm going to be talking about. It's also a three-piece system with the main body um, not being supported, supported by uh, polymer only. I'll show you pictures of that. And the limbs being constructed of nitinol and EPTFE. Um, it, it comes in very low diameter, so one of its advantages is deliverability with the smallest um, uh, main body uh, delivery of 14 French um, and can be treated with very small neck. It has the uh, shortest length uh, neck that uh, on IFU, seven millimeter neck, although they have a 13 millimeter uh, covered segment, which I'll show you. And the, thing, and the uh, main body is, is uh, fixated with a very long suprarenal stent. So here's the long suprarenal stent that can see that it extends all the way up into the visceral vessels. It does have nitinol anchors on it. Um, the main body again has uh, these O-rings which are filled with polymer. And this is what reinforces the uh, main body and the, uh, the uh, main component of the limbs. So it's held in place by, these, uh, by the, the stents. And you can see the, um, the inflatable rings, which I'll show you in a little bit more detail. Again, very deliverable with a 14 French delivery sheath, can, can navigate very tortuous and small iliac vessels. And with a polymer O-ring can conform to thrombus-laden and calcium-laden necks, as you see here. Uh, this emphasizing the low deliverability, uh, 14 French OD compared to other systems, and uh, its ability to t uh, navigate uh, tortuous anatomy. So some of the uh, advantages as far as reverse taper neck, that since it has a very low, uh, only requires an O sealing ring. It only needs seven millimeters of uh, fixation, although you can see here that this is the amount of uh, material. So if you want to sneak these rings up all the way to the renal arteries, you actually have to protect it from the material here, this 13 millimeters of material, by placing a vent, which I'm not going to get into too much today. Because of the conformability of the polymer, it can conform around uh, calcification, and you can see its ability to do this in these, uh, these right screens. With all polymer-based technology, it has very low radial force that once the polymer is set, it basically has zero radial force with, um, with modular devices that have high radial force. There has been seen, Dr. Tudor, I think, initially presented this data um, about the expansion of the neck with time with high radial force, and they have some very good data about the ability of uh, polymer to prevent that later expansion of the neck. Um, the Lombard Aorfix is really a very conformable graph meant for high uh, angulation, again, a modular two-piece device made out of nitinol and polyester. Um, 18 to 20 French uh, uh, diameter systems. Um, and it has this helical stent design, which I'm going to show you, that allows for the highest degree of neck angulation of all devices up to 90 degrees. So here's the, here's the device. It has um, a fish mouth or scallops, which is meant to be placed all the way at the renals. It has hooks to allow for fixation. Um, it has radiopaque markers so because the uh, cannulation gate is actually anterior on this device. So it has to have very good radial markers for you to be able to see this. Um, it has interlocking helical design gates, so you can see there's a helical configuration of all of these uh, stents, both the iliac and the, um, and the main body of the device that allows for flexibility. Um, it has an 8 millimeter ceiling zone, um, and this is the example of the helical design of the uh, limbs that allow for its conform conformation to uh, tortuosity. Here's some examples of very uh, of iliac tortuosity and high degree of neck angulation that's treated well with the AR fixed device. Their clinical results are good that with high, uh, over 60 degree neck angulations was out, out of IFU for other devices, um, very low type one endo leak rate and very low stent migration rate. So last device I'm going to talk to you about is an Elix device. I have a couple minutes left. This is a device that's un currently in IDE trials. The, the data is going to be released at VEATH later this month, and then we'll go to FDA. This is a fully uh, polymer-based system with two independent stents and a polymer-filled bag made out of the same cobalt chrome and PTFE that the other um, endologics material is. Um, it can treat, uh, looking for an IFU of uh, 10 millimeter length and 32 millimeter diameter, so not too much different, although it has been um, placed in very much more um, advanced necks in Europe. Um, the one thing that's strange about this is that it uses the uh, aero itself for fixation, so it has to have a less than 6 centimeter diameter lumen for the endo bag to fully inflate. Um, and it can also seal in, in ectatic iliacs or very large iliacs up to 
actually, frankly, aneurysmal 3.5 centimeter iliac aneurysms. So this is the stent design, very different. Two independent stents. My battery's running out, but you can see two uh, independent stents that are placed. Once they're placed in the body, they're actually then the endo bag is blown up. On the rightmost screen, you can see that the um, that the entire endo, the aneurysm sac is now devoid of material once it's filled with the polymer. Thank you, Dr. Q. Um, so it's designed to actually seal the entire aneurysm itself. That's where the fixation is, different than other grafts. This might min, uh, minimize endo leaks and prevent migration. And there's some data that it will uh, decrease uh, reintervention rates. This is the delivery system itself. The, again, the cobalt uh, chromium stent covered with PTFE, and this is the endo bag that inflates with polymer. The device delivery, these are uh, mirror images. That one goes up each iliac. This is a 17 French OD catheter, so a little bit smaller. Um, and then all of the, uh, the quick connects are down here at the console. The two devices in the body connect together, so everything is done through the console at the bottom. This allows you access to the endo bag, both for, uh, for, uh, for aspiration and for inflation of polymer. You have a, a port for inflating the stents and then a port for doing uh, angiograms. As far as endoleaks, does this work? Uh, this is the registry data out of Europe. Um, this is about 250, over 250 cases done in real world situations. Very low endo leak rate. Type 2 endoleaks, there's only one seen in over 250 patients. And type 1A endoleaks do happen because of folds in the endo bag and can be dangerous. I won't show you exactly that for uh, constraints of time. But as far as persistent endo leaks at 12 months, the data from Europe showing that there's a less than 1% endo leak rate compared to the other IDE trials that are out there. So uh, in summary, I know I was talking fast. I hope it didn't sound like a used car salesman up here. Uh, but I did want to give uh, credit to all the, uh, the wonderful uh, uh, people that have supported this uh, conference and have supported us throughout our time. I think all of these devices are very useful. They all have their own um, uh, unique uh, features about them that, uh, that allow us to Pick the right, uh, pick the right surfboard whenever we're out in the big waves.